My name is Jim Asselstein. I'm the founder and director of the Dorflinger Factory Museum here in White Mills, Pennsylvania. I started to collect Dorflinger glass about 30 years ago, and about 12 years ago, my wife and I had the opportunity to acquire the remaining buildings from the Dorflinger factory and to restore those buildings. So Christian Dorflinger arrived in this country in 1846. He was a journeyman glass blower and he came to America, to New York City, from France, and Christian Dorflinger spent several years working at the Union Glass Company in Philadelphia before establishing his first factory in Brooklyn in 1852. He built a second factory in Brooklyn in 1858, and then a still newer factory in Brooklyn in 1860. In 1863, Christian Dorflinger moved from New York to White Mills, Pennsylvania. So our museum collection has in excess of 4,000 objects. We have the largest and most comprehensive collection of Dorflinger glass in the world. Much of our collection also includes tools and equipment, and we also are very fortunate to have examples of pieces of the glass that were partially completed but never finished. Our approach to exhibits is to really focus on two things. Number one, to explain to our visitors how this glass was made and how it was decorated. But in addition to that, we want to show how this glass was used in society. One of the interesting things about the museum is we show a lifestyle that we're not really used to today. So this glass itself is of extremely high quality. Many of the workers came from Europe and they brought with them the styles and the designs that were used frequently in Europe as well. But over time, the American industry really developed a style and a quality that was unique to this country's industry. My name is Kurt Reed and I am the curator here at the Dorflinger Factory Museum. I think the thing that makes him so interesting is that he was in business so long. He started out very early studying in the 1830s and 40s, and then the business kept going right through 1921. So it covers all the different periods of the American glass history and different styles. I think because we have such a, a variety in the collection that you can see all the different time periods that are here. We have quite a bit of the White House glass. He started making glass for the White House with Abraham Lincoln and continued right through Woodrow Wilson. Then some great pieces of color, but a lot of presentational pieces are here. So we try to cover a lot of things that would be interesting to the public, not just glass. I think that there's such a variety that, you know, he, he was certainly not opposed, or at least when the sons came into the business in 1888, they were not opposed to keep changing with the times. The museum collection here has samples of some of the finest pieces produced by the Dorflinger Glass Companies. One really good example is a cut glass baseball bat. We have some wonderful examples of pieces in color as well. And then we have some fun pieces. We want people to look at and see and understand how the glass was made and the process for making it. We're also very fortunate to have many of the existing structures that were initially built by Christian Dorflinger to support the factory operations. The surrounding community really provides the context for what you see at the Museum. So when visitors come to White Mills, they can not only see what we have at the museum, but they can also see how the workers lived, and that's an important part of the story. So we are very fortunate that there are three major collections of Dorflinger glass in the immediate White Mills area. Obviously, we have the Dorflinger Factory Museum. We also have the Dorflinger Glass Museum. The third major collection is located at the Everhart Museum in Scranton. 
And that's also another wonderful collection of Dorflinger glass. And we work very closely with both the Dorflinger Glass Museum and the Everhart Museum to tell the story. My name is Marilyn Costa. I have an antique shop in Waverly, Pennsylvania. My favorite aspects of the museum are the way the wide collection is displayed. It's displayed very carefully in cases that you can go 360 degrees around so you can see the back of an object, not just the front and the side views. And I think it's also sort of a mystery that there's a little whisper of the past here because it is in the actual room where the objects were made and where they were cut. And I think every day that you would ask me if what my favorite piece is, it would be different each day because there's always something else that gets your attention. And he brought the best blowers in. He brought the best designers in. He brought the best cutters in to his organization. Uh, and he also helped some of these people who had worked for him uh, succeed when they branched off and started their own business. And I like that about him. I think that I very much enjoy serving on the Board of Trustees of this museum because there is a common goal. Everyone works together. Everyone contributes their talents, their life experiences, and their energies to help a common goal. And that is to make this museum known in the area and relevant to the community. And I think I respect the founders and what they've tried to do in assembling this great collection. So we think that the factory offers an interesting window into the Industrial Revolution and the growth of a uniquely American industry. It's a fascinating story about one individual who came to this country, built an industry, and built one of the leading companies in the country. And so we hope that we can offer to our visitors to the area a window into an important industry and into some really beautiful examples of the work done by the workers at this factory and produced by the Dorflinger companies. We do close during the winter months, but we are open on a regular basis from mid-April through mid-December. We're open on Wednesdays through Sundays. Our website at www.dorflingerfactorymuseum.com has detailed information about visiting the, the museum. We offer guided tours three times during the day, uh, and our exhibits are really user-friendly uh, with good labeling. So if you miss one of the guided tours, it's relatively easy to do a self-guided visit to the, to the museum and really get a full appreciation of what we have to offer. Always we are available for questions. So if you see something and you want to know a little bit more on just that, you know, don't hesitate to ask us and we'll give you as much as you'd like to know. We also offer a range of other events and activities. Those are detailed on our website. We offer a lecture series every year throughout the, uh, the season. And we also try to offer a number of special exhibits. We rotate the collection so that if you visit the museum several times, you'll always see new and different things. So uh, we welcome you to come the first time and we welcome repeat visitors. We think we'll always be able to offer you something new and interesting as well.